Hello viewers, I am Nilofa Zirgam from Jamia Millia Islamia. Welcome you to the third part of differentiation and its applications. In this episode, we shall discuss on market equilibrium, also the functions of marginal and average revenue, marginal and average cost, marginal propensity with their examples discussed. Elasticity of demand and supply has also been discussed and how these are different from each other. But we must first understand the following concepts before proceeding further. Let us consider a situation where a manufacturer supply X units of his product to the market at a price of rupees P per unit and the demand of consumers of product is Q units. When supply equals to the demand at this price, then the market is in equilibrium. E is the point where demand and supply curve intersect to each other. If X0 and P0 is equilibrium point, then quantity X0 and price P0 are called as equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price respectively. Now, let us see an illustration here. Let the demand and supply equations are demand equation B. 2p plus 4x is equal to 122 and supply equation b 5p minus 2x is equal to 89. Then the point x0 and p0 of the market equilibrium is obtained by solving the given equations for x and p. By multiplying the equations second by the 2 and then adding we get 2p plus 4x plus 2 into 5p minus 2x which is equal to 122 plus 2 into 89. So, this yields 2p plus 10p plus 0 that is equal to 300 or p is equal to 25. So, using this value of p in any one of the given equations, we find 5 into 25 minus 3x that is equal to 89 or x is equal to 18. Hence, x0 is equal to 18 and p0 is equal to 25. Now, let us see an example here. In a competitive market, demand and supply are 800 minus P and 4 P respectively. A tax at the rate of T per unit is imposed. Find the tax rate that maximize the tax yield. The solution to this is when tax of T per unit is imposed, the price received by the supplier would be P minus T per unit. The quantity supplied would therefore be 4 into P minus T. Equilibrium level of output after living tax is as under 800 minus P which is equal to 4 into P minus T. So, that is 5P is equal to 800 plus 4T or P is equal to 160 plus 4 by 5T. Using this value of P in the demand equation, we get demand is equal to 800 minus P which is equal to 800 minus 160 plus 4 by 5 t. So, that is equal to 640 minus 4 by 5 t. If t denotes the total tax collection, then t is equal to small t into demand, which is equal to small t into 640 minus 4 by 5 t. So, that is equal to 640 t minus 4 by 5 t square. Now, the first differentiation of t that is dt by dx will be equal to 640 minus 8 by 5 t and d square t by dx square that is the second differentiation of t will be equal to minus 8 by 5 which will be lesser than 0. Therefore, the first differentiation of t that is dt by dx will be equal to 0. So, this implies that 640 minus 8 by 5 t will be equal to 0 or we can say t is equal to 640 into 5 the whole thing divided by 8 which is equal to 400. Since the first differentiation that is dt by dx is equal to 0, it gives 
t is equal to 400 and the second differentiation that is d square d by dx square will be lesser than 0. So, that is total tax is maximum at t is equal to 400. This concept is the instant rate of change of one quantity with respect to another quantity and the other average is one quantity over a specified range of values of another quantity. In other words, the variation of one quantity with respect to another quantity may be described by either marginal or average cost. Total money expenses incurred for buying the input requirement for producing a commodity Total money is equal to the addition of fixed cost and the variable cost. If C of x is the total cost, then V of x is the variable cost and F is equal to fixed cost. If the output is of x units, then C of x will be equal to V of x plus F capital F where x is greater than or equal to 0. Here the fixed cost F is independent of the level of output x. That is it remains constant at all levels of output. If C of x be the total cost when output is of x units, then A average cost capital AC which is equal to total cost divided by output. So, that is equal to V of x plus F the whole thing is divided by x. B average variable cost AVC. So, that is equal to variable cost divided by output. So, that is equal to V of x divided by x. C average fixed cost that is A f c which is equal to fixed cost divided by output. So, that is equal to capital F divided by x. D marginal cost m c which is equal to the first differentiation of cost that is d c by d x. Now, let us come to an example. The total cost c of x of a firm is given as c of x is equal to 2000 plus 40 x plus 2 x square where x is the output. Now, we have to determine here the first thing the average cost, the second the marginal cost, the third the marginal cost when 25 units are produced and the last part the actual cost of producing 20 units. Let us see the solution given is c of x is equal to 2000 plus 40 x plus 2 x square. So, let us come to the first part that is the average cost we have to find which is a c this is equal to c of x divided by x. So, that is equal to 2000 plus 40 x plus 2 x square the whole thing is divided by x. So, this is equal to 2000 divided by x plus 40 plus 2 x. Solve the second part that is the marginal cost m c it is given as the first differentiation of cost c of x. So, d by d x of c of x will be equal to 40 plus 4 x. Third part the marginal cost at x equals to 25 will be equal to 40 plus 4 into 25 which is equal to 40 plus 50 that gives you 140. Now, the last part of the problem actual cost of producing 30th unit will be equal to the cost c of x at x equals to 20 minus the cost c of x at x equals to 19. So, we are finding c of 20 minus c of 19. So, that is equal to 2000 plus 40 into 20 plus 2 into 20 square minus 2000 plus 40 into 19 plus 2 into 19 square. So, that is equal to 3600 minus 3482. So, that gives us 118. Now, let us come to the next example. The total cost C of x of our output x is given by C of x is equal to 300 x minus 10 x square plus 1 by 3 x cube. Now, find the output level at which the marginal cost and the average cost receive their respective minima. Okay, let us see the solution given as c of x is equal to 300 x minus 10 x square plus 1 by 3 x cube. So, that implies marginal cost will be equal to d of our dx that is the first differentiation of c of x. So, let us find the first differentiation of c of x that is equal to 300 minus 20 x plus x square. 
Now, the first differentiation of the marginal cost will be equal to minus 20 plus 2x. So, let us find d of dx that, that we have find it that d of dx of mc will be equal to 0. So, that we can say minus 20 plus 2x is equal to 0. So, that implies 2x is equal to 20 and finally, we get x is equal to 10. So, d square the second differentiation of mc that is d square mc by dx square will be equal to 2 which is always positive. Now, the marginal cost mc is minimum at x is equal to 10. Now, the average cost ac will be equal to c of x divided by x. So, that is equal to 300 x minus 10 x square plus 1 by 3 x cube that whole thing is divided by x. So, this is equal to 300 minus 10 x plus 1 by 3 x square. Now, the first differentiation of ac is equal to minus 10 plus 2 by 3 x. So, d of dx of ac will be equal to 0 minus 10 plus 2 by 3 x. So, that is equal to 0. Uh, so, that 2 by 3 of x is equal to 10 and that finally, gives us x is equal to 30 upon 2 that is equal to 15. So, finally, we have x is equal to 15. Now, again the second differentiation of ac that is d square ac dx square is equal to 2 by 3 which is always positive. So, we see that average cost ac is minimum at x equals to 50. So, revenue which is represented as capital R. So, R of x gives the total money obtained that is a total turnover by selling x units of product. If x units are sold at rupees p per unit, then r of x is equal to p into x, so p x. Now, average revenue, it is a revenue per unit and is found by dividing total revenue that is r of x by the quantity sold x. Also by definition, average revenue a r is given as a r is equal to r by x which is small p. In other words, Average revenue is the average receipts from the sale of certain units of commodity. Now, marginal revenue, it is the rate of change in revenue per unit change in output. Capital R is the revenue and small x is the output, then MR that is marginal revenue is equal to the first differentiation of R that is dr by dx. In other words, Marginal revenue is the addition made to the total revenue by selling one more unit of a commodity. We should note over here that the marginal revenue curve is always below the average revenue curve unless it coincides with it. It is a price at which profit is maximum. It can be shown that the price at the point of equilibrium is the same as the monopoly price. Now, we can show marginal analysis of a firm operating under two conditions of pure competition and monopoly. So, the first part here, the basic assumptions under pure competition are the first one, there are many firms, second condition, price determined by the market third condition price does not depend on the output of a firm. In this case r of x is equal to p into x and marginal revenue mr is equal to p. Now, the second part the basic assumptions under the monopoly are the first one there is only one seller, second one price depends on demand and vice versa, third part the firm sells his commodity on its lower price. In this case, R of x is equal to p x, where p depends on x. Marginal revenue here in this case, M R is equal to p plus x into the first differentiation of p that is d p by d x. Now, let us see an example here. Find the total revenue and the marginal revenue for a firm operating under a pure competition with the current price of rupees 20 per unit. So, let us see the solution. Let x units are sold in the market. Then the total revenue is given by capital R is equal to 20 x. The marginal revenue that is M R is given as the first differentiation of 20 x that is d by d x of 20 x. So, that is equal to 20. This shows that the marginal revenue remains uh, rupees 20 regardless of the number of units that are sold. Come to other example. 
let the demand function is given as x is equal to 30 minus 6 p where p is the price per unit. Now, what we have to do here is we have to find the marginal revenue function for the monopolist. Now, let us see the solution. We are given here x is equal to 30 minus 6 p that is p is equal to 5 minus 1 by 6 x. Total revenue is that is capital T r is equal to p x which is equal to 5 minus 1 by 6 x the whole thing is multiplied by x again. So, that is equal to 5 x minus 1 by 6 x square. Hence, marginal revenue is equal to d by d x of 5 x minus 1 by 6 x square which is equal to 5 minus 2 by 6 x. So, that is equal to 5 minus 1 by 3 x. So, marginal revenue is equal to 5 minus 1 by 3 x. Now, let us come to the next example find total revenue average revenue and marginal revenue for the demand function p is equal to under root 200 minus x square where p is the price and x is the quantity demanded. Now, let us come up to the solution to this we have p is equal to under root 200 minus x square and x is equal to quantity demanded. So, t r is equal to p x that is equal to under root 200 minus x square into x and a r average revenue is given as t r by x. So, that is equal to p which is equal to under root 200 minus x square. Now, the marginal revenue is the first differentiation of t r. So, m r is equal to d by d x of t r which is equal to d by d x of x into under root 200 minus x square. So, that is equal to 1 into under root 200 minus x square plus x into d by d x of under root 200 minus x square. So, that is equal to 1 into under root 200 minus x square plus x into minus 2 x the whole thing divided by 2 into under root 200 minus x square. So, that is equal to 200 minus x square minus x square the whole thing is divided by under root 200 minus x square. So, that is equal to 200 minus 2 x square divided by under root 200 minus x square. So, that brings us to the next example the total revenue received from the sale of x units of product is given by r of x which is equal to 40 x minus x square. We have to find here the marginal revenue average revenue marginal revenue at x equals to 5 and the actual revenue from the sale of the 7th unit. Now, let us come to the solution here marginal revenue m r it is given as first differentiation of r of x. So, d by d x of r of x is equal to d by d x of 40 x minus x square. So, that is equal to 40 minus 2 x average revenue a r is given as r of x divided by x which is equal to 40 x minus x square the whole thing is divided by x. So, that is equal to 40 minus x. Now, m r at x equals to 5 will be equal to 40 minus 2 into 5. So, that is equal to 30. Now, actual revenue from the sale of the 7th unit can be found out by the differentiation of r that is r of 7 minus r of 6. So, that is equal to 40 into 7 minus 7 x square minus 40 into 6 minus 6 x square. So, that is equal to 231 minus 204 which is equal to 27. So, that means this is equal to rupees 27. The change in revenue that results from the addition of one extra unit when all other factors are kept equal. The marginal revenue product MRP is used in marginal analysis to examine the effect of variable inputs such as labor and follows the law of diminishing marginal returns. In other words, it is different than the marginal product in that it is not a measure of quantity, but a measure of revenue. Hence, the marginal revenue predict is given by the first differentiation of r that is dr by dx which is equal to dx by dy into p plus x into dp by dx where 
r is the total revenue small x is produces uh, in per unit p is the price of the product small y is equal to employees employing per day on x unit now let's see an example here a manufacturer determines that y employees will produce a total of x units of product per day where x is equal to 4y if demand equation for the product is p is equal to minus 0.5x plus 40 then determines the marginal revenue of the product when y is equal to 5. Let us see the solution total revenue is given by capital R is equal to px so that is equal to minus 0.5x plus 40 the whole thing is multiplied by x so that is equal to minus 0.5x square plus 40x which is equal to minus 0.5 into 4y square plus 40 into 4y. So, that is equal to minus 8y square plus 160y. So, MRP is equal to the first differentiation of r dr by dy. So, that is equal to minus 16y plus 160. So, MRP at y is equal to 5 will be equal to dr by dy at y equal to 5. So, that is equal to minus 16 into 5 plus 160 which gives you 80. If sixth employee is hired, extra revenue generated will be given approximately as 80. The conception function capital C is equal to function of capital I. So, it relates between total income given as capital I and total conception given as capital C. When the rate of change of conception C with respect to the income I is defined as the marginal propensity to consume. So, that is DC by DI that is the first differentiation of the conception. Let I minus C equals to S which is saving. Then the rate of change of saving with respect to income is defined as the marginal propensity to save that is ds by di it shows how fast saving change with respect to income now let's come to an example let the conception is given by c is equal to 71 plus 16 into under root i where i is the income when i is equal to 25 determine the marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to save okay let's see the solution we have c is equal to 71 plus 16 into under root i and s is equal to i minus c so marginal propensity to consume is given as tc by di so that is equal to 7 plus 16 into 1 by 2 into under root i which is equal to 7 plus 8 by under root i when i is equal to 25 that is dc by di at i is equal to 25 will be given as 7 plus 8 by under root 25 which is equal to 7 plus 8 by 5. Now marginal propensity to save will be equal to the first differentiation of saving so that ds by di so that is equal to d by di of i minus c so that is equal to 1 minus dc by di. So, that is equal to 1 minus 7 plus 8 divided by under root i. So, this is equal to minus 6 plus 8 divided by under root i. Now, when i is equal to 25, ds by di at i is equal to 25 will be minus 6 plus 8 by under root 25. So, that is equal to minus 6 plus 8 by 5 which is equal to minus 38 by 5. Now, what is elasticity? Measurement of the percentage changes in one variable that result from a 1% change in another variable is elasticity. The price elasticity of demand is how sensitive is the quantity demanded to a change in the price of the goods. The price elasticity of supply is how sensitive is the quantity supplied to a change in the price of the goods. Now, let y is equal to f of x be a function of x where y is the independent and x is the dependent variable. Proportionate change in x and y are delta x by x and delta y by y respectively 
and elasticity of the function denoted by e or eta. Now, eta is equal to proportionate change in y divided by proportionate change in x. So, that is delta y by y divided by delta x by x, where delta x is a change in x and delta y is a corresponding change in y. If delta x goes to 0, then the limit the expression x by y times dy by dx gives us the measure of responsiveness of the function at the point x itself. That is x by y into dy by dx as a point of elasticity of the function y equals to f of x at the point x and it is denoted by e to the base y or eta to the base y. So, eta is given as dy by dx by y by x. So, that is equal to marginal function divided by average function. It is a measure of responsiveness of quantity of a raw goods or service demanded a change in its price. In other words, it is the measure of how a change in price affects a change in quantity for a particular goods or service. If p small p is equal to f of x is the demand function, the price elasticity of demand at point p will be denoted by eta to the base d is given as eta to the base d that is equal to minus p by x into dx by dp. So, that is equal to minus dx by dp divided by x by p which is equal to minus marginal quantity demanded divided by average quantity demanded. The crucial value of eta to the base d is 1. When eta to the base d is greater than 1, then the demand is elastic. When eta to the base d is lesser than 1, the demand is inelastic and eta to the base d is equal to 1, the demand is unitary. The elasticity of supply with respect to price is the proportionate change in quantity supplied divided by the proportionate change in price. If small p is equal to g of x is the supply function and the price elasticity of supply at point p is denoted by eta to the base s is given by eta to the base d is equal to p by x into dx by dp. There are a number of important applications in business and economics based on maxima and minima. Depending on, on its nature, some are maxima and some are minimal. Now, let us see an example here. A manufacturer finds that it can sell all that it can produce. The demand function is given as small p is equal to 360 minus 3x, where p is the price per unit at which it can sell x units. The cost function is given as capital C is equal to 500 plus 600x, where x is the number of units produced. Now, we have to find x so that the profit is maximum. Now, let us see the solution here. Revenue function given as capital R is equal to Px. So, that is equal to 360 minus 3x. The whole thing is multiplied by x. And cost function capital C is given as 500 plus 6x. So, the profit function capital P will be given as R minus C. So, that is equal to minus 3x square plus 300x minus 500. The capital P is the maximum when dp by dx is equal to 0 that is the first differentiation of p is 0 and the second differentiation of p is lesser than 0. So, that is d square p dx square will be lesser than 0. So, dp by dx is equal to 0 so that implies minus 6x six six plus 300 is equal to 0 which gives us x is equal to 50 and the second differentiation of p is equal to minus 6 so that is also lesser than 0. So, at x is equal to 50, we see that profit is maximum. Now, maximum profit we can obtain by putting the value of 50 over there. So, maximum profit is equal to minus 3 into 50 square plus 300 into 50 minus 500. So, that gives us 7000. So, that finally brings us to the end. So, finally, we have learnt today market equilibrium, the functions of marginal and average revenue 
marginal and average cost, marginal propensity with their examples, monopoly, elasticity of demand and supply has also been discussed and how these are different from each other it has also been discussed. So, that brings us to the end of today's episode. We are ending here and we will see you again with a fresh episode on integration and its application. Till then, have a nice time. Thank you and bye.